Hi, welcome to the Georgia Tech Industrial Design Graduate Studio in collaboration with the ER1 Initiative and HKS. On behalf of myself, Jonathan Jowers, my classmates Camila Vargas, Ritesh Rathi, and Doria Kong, who you'll meet later, and our professor Claudia Weingarten, we welcome you. Let me start by saying thank you to our sponsors for the opportunity to develop the portal project for the Washington Hospital Center and to our collaborators for their insight. We feel that our solution for the entry and exit system effectively addresses the core issues for the ER1 project, including decontamination, disposition, detection, and detention. Our solution uses emerging technologies as well as a unique layout that helps protect the hospital by preventing threat propagation and providing a user-friendly environment. The application of these technologies is of key interest to us. This project was developed in phases each addressing the goals for ER1 and dealing with the issues of hospital preparedness, understanding users, spatial considerations, and safety. So let's get straight into the explanation of our project. The layout for the hospital entry point has three bi-directional portals that are accessible to the general user. Whether a portal is open or closed is known by the lighting outside of the portal. Public users and staff are made aware of the portals by the numbered system visible on the blast walls. These thick, heavy concrete exterior walls are placed here specifically for blast mitigation purposes. The portal is divided into the following sections. The security booth, the main entry and exit hallways, the wheelchair and stretcher storage areas, and the blast mitigation walls. Let's see what happens when someone enters the hospital. The three portals are versatile in the ways which they function. The flow of users is easily controlled, and the hallways, with their symmetrical design, allows them to adapt to different functions and situations of entry and exit. The entry and exit systems are clearly demarcated with lighting on the outside of the portal, green for entry and red for non-entry. On either side of the exterior of the portal are two avatar screens displaying animated, human-like characters. Hi, my name is Sonia. These avatars can sense when a user is in close proximity and can interact with them. They will act as virtual guides, informing users on the availability of the wheelchair and stretchers that are stored within vending machine-like areas, and as to which portals are open or closed. Once inside the portal, users are pre-screened with both metal and biological contaminant detectors, as well as thermographers. This is done with no effort from the user. Security booths in the center can work with either human facilitation as well as automation. Much of the data collected is displayed to only the security guards inside their booth. Iris, the hand scanning devices, are where users are expected to scan their hands so they can be identified. Ambient displays on top of the doors of the portal create an amicable environment. Once a user is cleared for entry, the doors on the far side of the portal will open. They can now pass through the portal. Technologies for further testing, such as more accurate metal detection, decontamination, and detention are also available inside the portal. Doria will discuss these later in more detail. Thanks, John. Hi, my name is Doria, and I will be speaking to you about the specific solutions we have developed in this project. I will navigate you through our identification and recognition system, decontamination process, detention functionality, and how users can access wheelchairs and stretchers. During the identification and recognition process, a user simply walks up to IRIS, the identification recognition integrated system that is attached to the ceiling and places their hand on the self-cleaning sensing surface. Video cameras contained inside IRIS also collect facial recognition data that may be incorporated with the database. By combining these biometric data sets, the portal is able to create unique identities for each user. This identity allows hospital staff to track users throughout the hospital until they exit. The tall cylindrical units cater to people of varied heights, including wheelchair users. 
Decontamination is part of the security and safety procedure of the ER1 portal. When a user enters the portal, chemical and bioagent sensors detect if the user is contaminated. There are two chemical sensor units incorporated into the ventilation system in the ceiling, one at each end of the portal. The bioagent sensor is also implemented as a module unit incorporated in the ceiling. If the user is detected as contaminated, the entry door to the hospital will be locked. Then a circular icon on the floor will light up. Next, an avatar will emerge from the ambient display and instruct the person to stand inside the lit circle. Once the user is located inside the circle, the decontamination shower curtain will drop from the ceiling. There are three pouches located on the curtain. The first pouch is for the user to dispose his or her contaminated belongings. Once the user disposes the contaminated belongings, the decontamination process will start. The showers used for decontamination can also be used for the general cleaning of the portal. The second pouch contains a shower brush with a soap dispenser. The user will be instructed to use the brush and soap to clean and decontaminate themselves. To eliminate threats to the hospital and community at large, detention is incorporated into the design of the ER1 entry portal. When a user with an excessive amount of metal on them is detected via the metal detectors, they will be asked to go for further testing to the backscatter device located on the opposite walls of the security booth. During this time, the doors leading to the hospital will be locked. If there is more than one user in the portal, the doors facing the outside will remain open, allowing innocent bystanders to exit. The backscatter device will scan the user for any metallic objects, guns, and bombs. If a user is detected with carrying harmful objects, the portal doors will be locked. The authorities will be notified, and the user will be asked to dispose of the offending object in the disposal drawer at the security booth. If no threatening devices are found on the user, the portal doors will open allowing the user to enter the hospital. Each portal contains two wheelchairs and one stretcher. There are access just outside the portal entry doors. Both the wheelchairs and stretcher are enclosed behind double layer tempered glass to protect them from the elements. This design decision was made to ensure the cleanliness security, and easy access of the wheelchairs and stretcher. With the wheelchairs and stretcher placed partially outside, the main portal hallways can remain entirely closed, depending on the situation. To access a wheelchair or stretcher, the user must open the latch corresponding to the item. Activating this latch alerts the security staff within the portal to the user's whereabouts and allows the user to be identified. Once a wheelchair is pulled out, it can be unfolded and ready for use. Likewise, once the stretcher is pulled out, it can be quickly unfolded and ready for use. There are instructions on the doors to provide users with its setup information for both the wheelchair and stretchers. If there are no wheelchairs or stretchers currently located at the user's portal, an avatar will instruct the user to the nearest access location at another portal. To prevent the misuse and theft of the wheelchairs and stretchers, the wheels will automatically lock if they leave the hospital premises. They will be returned by the user or security staff. Now we will move on to the second half of our presentation, where we will focus on the details of our solution. I hope that you have enjoyed part one. I would like to pass the baton on to Ritesh and Camila. Take it away, guys.